guys, welcome back. We're working on our Ford Transit camper van, and we've been installing these ADB 1033 awning style windows from CR Lawrence. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is um, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where the standard screws that come with this are really challenging to put into this frame because you essentially, uh, if you do not pre drill the holes, to accept these screws, it's really hard to get them to bite through the aluminum. At the same time, you're not able to get a good feel if you got a full seat of the screw clamping the frame to the window to get your seal. And what this is causing, and this is just from my watching of YouTube people with these uh, doing these windows install, is the four corners of this window does not get clamped down sufficiently enough in some rare cases where it actually leaks water. So to prevent that and make this installation easier, I've decided to go with socket head cap screws. So what I'm using is the Hillman M4 0.70 by 12 millimeter socket head cap screw. Now, in my engineering days, when I was designing parts, I would use socket head cap screws almost exclusively because it's a really easy way to uh, work on parts that you design, take them apart, assemble them, assemble them together. Um, and I really like them. They kind of have like a little, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, have like a little knurled pattern. They accept a three millimeter uh, uh, Allen wrench to screw them in. And in my case, uh, the way I'm designing this van, I need to take this window out multiple times. I needed to put it in to clamp down on a trim ring that's gonna be glued into the van. Then I need to disassemble it, put in an interior panel, trace out my section, and then cut it out and then reassemble the window back into the van. So I guess only two times. However, in doing that, if you use the standard screws um, from Sierra Lawrence, the problem is you're not able to, uh, trying to rechase the threads all that you cut into the aluminum with these, uh, they're more, they're very, very coarse threaded screw. It makes it really challenging to, you know, rechase those threads when you reassemble the window if you have to. So what I'm doing is kind of going back to my engineering roots and drilling and tapping holes so there's a standardized hole for every part around the trim ring and we don't have this everything getting out of adjustment when we go from here to the van. What I'm talking about is the adjustment is this ring, as you see, this is exactly how it came out of the box. And even though this uh, GoPro lens distorts things, this uh, radius right here, there's like a, it dips and then it bumps up and turns around. So it's not a perfect, um, it's not a perfect curve. And then you have this much that needs to be put together. So this is really wobbly. And this is also another reason why when people use this wobbly trim ring to cut out their hole for the window, the hole is typically too big for the window. And the window fits, but you lose the surface uh, sealing area. You lose the surface area to seal the window to the van. And that allows you to have water leaks. And if you don't have if your trim ring seated properly and clamped down in the four corners, you're more likely to get water leaks. So what we're doing is we're taking our trim ring, we're putting it onto the frame, and then we're going to set a home position for one screw and a home position for this top screw here. And we're going to lock that into place. Going to make sure this is nice and flush on the side with a good seating, uh, good seat so we're not pinching on top of this frame. We're, we're seated very well. And then as we come along this left side, we'll be able to bend this back in over here so that we can get this gap closed. If, see if I let go, this whole thing bends out. 
So what we have to do to fix that is we'll have a couple of these clamps and we'll be able to come on the inside of this window uh, without actually damaging anything. And we can come in and we'll be able to come in and conform this to our window frame and hold it into place. And that way, once everything gets seated, we will drill all of our holes to be able to tap a M4 by 0 0.70 hole. You need two things. You need a 3.3 millimeter drill bit. You can find it at any uh, bolt and tool shop where they sell uh, um, anything to you know drill and tap with um, look at find, find like a local store you're not going to find something like this at home depot or lowe's or you can buy it online it'll come in a plastic case uh sort of like this and the m4 uh i'm sorry the drill bit will be separate 3.3 millimeter drill bit and you can find charts online that'll tell you what drill bit matches up with the uh, specific tap that you want to use. So this one that we're using is an M4.70 and inside here you'll get a little, you'll have, you'll have your tap and it has all of these little uh, cutouts and basically this is what chews through the aluminum and makes those threads. I'm not sure if that's in focus. Um, chews through those threads so this is what we're going to be using but you need to have a, a tap kit to be able to mount this tap into a device so that when you, uh, that has also a T-handle, so that when you go, you can actually cut those threads into your uh, window frame. So this is separate. Um, you may be able to find this at Lowe's Home Depot. You can also buy just a cheap tap kit from Harbor Freight. And that Harbor Freight tap kit uh, it might have a different thread pitch than these screws. The only reason I'm using the thread pitch of 0 0.70 is because this is all that they had at Lowe's. And what you want to do is you want to take a pair of calipers and you want to measure this screw from C.R. Lawrence. And you're trying to find... You're trying to find something that is... You're trying to find the thing, the closest, the screw that is the closest to what uh, C.R. Lawrence provides. And so what I've done is the top screw is the C.R. Lawrence supplied screw. Uh, I believe it's 15 millimeters long and it has a diameter of uh, 4 millimeters. And then the psycho head cap screw that I bought and will be using in this window is M4 by 0 0.70, like I said. 0 0.70 is the thread pitch. So that is the uh, pitch of the threads right here. So you can see the CR Lawrence one is very coarse, and this is very fine. Um, so this is going to be able to mount the window better. Now it is more challenging because you have more uh, room to mess up with these fine threads when you cut the threads with this tap. So you gotta be very careful, but the benefit of this is that you will now have a hole to which you can drill tap and then you can put Loctite on this screw and secure it into the window frame and you'll know that the window frame is very secure in the van. You don't have to worry about anything loosening up on you. So that's the other benefit. So the, the first challenging part of this whole thing is to get some clamps out. And these clamps will allow you to make sure that you find a, uh, I keep calling it a home position. And that's just a means that the trim ring is around this whole thing very evenly and it's distributed evenly. Some problems that people have online when they're doing the DIY route and they're mounting this window is they'll start drilling this. They'll put the window in the van after they cut the hole out. They'll start drilling these holes. And by the time they get over here, they're so off 
that this ring, uh, it's very hard to meet up and you might even have a gap like this. So you don't want, you don't want to have any gap here because this is designed to be nice and tight. So what I do is I find one side that's really good and I get it nice and tight on the frame. And then what I'm going to do up here at the top is I'm actually going to clamp it down. Not with a lot of force, just enough force to keep it so it doesn't uh, move. Because remember, this is aluminum, so we don't want to mess it up. And then I come over here. And then I want this to stay and not move. Same thing. You want to find these clamps that have these rubber protectors on them. And I have to get a better angle. So it looks like I'm going to have to go a little bit wider. There we go. Be careful, this is aluminum, so this stuff will scratch very easily. Uh, and don't, don't put a lot of force because this is, I'm actually mouth, touching the glass. So we don't want to. This is only just glued on here. So just very little for very little force, just enough to this hole doesn't move, this hole doesn't move, and this side stays where it's supposed to be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna forget about this side over here. Um, we can go over and just double check that we get enough room to. Yep, that's perfect. Um, do that. So as long as this could come over and come in flush, you're okay. Because what we want to do first is drill and tap this hole, this hole, so that we can take the clamps off of this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm getting ready to drill my hole. You want this window on a soft surface. Uh, but be aware that when you drill holes, you're going to get aluminum filings all over the place. So what I've done is I've taken my Dyson vacuum and I put a very fine nozzle on here. So when I can go in and I can actually suck out uh, any of the aluminum filings that are down there in that hole. So the first step is we're going to take this drill bit, the 3.3 millimeter, and we're going to find there's a groove in here. So maybe hard to see. But there is a there's a channel right in here, and in this channel, that is where uh, the screw goes into. Now, notice on this window, the way they manufacture it, they do not pre-drill any holes. So when you take the CRL screws, you're essentially taking a screw and forcing it to cut through the aluminum frame to make its original hole. Uh, I don't like that, so that's why I'm doing this method. And also because, you know, I said I need to take this window out uh, more than once. So you'll find this channel. The channel is like a V shape. And then within these holes, you'll also see where the V channel is. So that V channel is what you want to drill into. When you drill into this V channel, you're going to go down and there's gonna be a spot where you come out of the other side of it. So you're gonna go down into it and then you'll pop out the other side, not through the full frame, just the lip. Um, so what I'll do is I'll try to stick some uh, B-roll or some pictures in here to get a very detailed view of that so you don't mess up. All right guys, I'm gonna show you on this part right here, how we tap it so you guys can pretty much see a really good representation of this where the V, this uh, little V notch is. And right here, this is that uh, flange I'm talking about. So when I talk about drilling through it, you're going through here to here. You're not, you're not going through this bottom part. You're just going right here and just grazing the side of the frame. So when you drill down, you're only going to drill down to about right there. Do not go through this because that goes to the outside of the window. So from here to here, uh, it's no more than about a quarter of an inch from here to here. 
So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to place our tap right here in the groove and we're just going to gently start turning and the tap is going to start biting into the metal. There's going to be a certain point at which you're no longer going to be able to do it with your hands and you need to take your little, uh, I don't know, makes it look like a cork remover and then continue. And so you just continue doing it. Don't move side to side. Keep a nice vertical movement on here. And then the tap will go through. And then keep going. It'll get a little bit easier once it, it'll go. It'll be a little tough and then it'll get easy. But be careful because when you start to get to the end, it'll stop. And it's rubbing against, it's bottoming out where the drill bit went. So you know that's where you got to stop. Take this out and then just unscrew it really easy uh, with your fingers here until it comes out. Don't force it at all. It just comes right out nice and easy. And then you've tapped your hole. Go ahead and grab your vacuum. Remove your metal shavings. And then take your socket head cap screw and just go ahead and just double check your threads. Again, don't force this. You don't want to cross thread the hole you just made. So screw that in and it should go in nice and easy. And then it'll get to this uh, area down here and it'll start to get hard. That's where it bottoms out. Even though it's not touching the bottom, this wall here starts to curve in like this. So that's where this stops. But we don't need to worry about that because we're using a washer and the thickness of the washer, the thickness of the frame that clamps this window in, and the thickness of the body of the van, plus, in our case, the thickness of the uh, Flatline Vanco trim ring is going to make up all that difference. And we don't have to worry about bottoming out and cross threading our hole when we need to really clamp down on the window. Uh, later. So that is a detailed view of the of where the hole is tapped. Take your time. Aluminum is a very soft metal. Uh, much softer than steel if you've never done this before. So take your time and if you do it right you're going to have a fully tapped window frame that's really easy to install, take back out, and then the best part is you can put a little bit of Loctite on here when you're ready to finally put it in here. And those threads are going to be nice and locked in there. You don't have to use a lock washer. And that window is going to be in place uh, for a long time. All right, guys, I'm going to give you one more high diff shot of this. We've got our 4K going on here. We've got our socket head cap screw. We're going to tap this hole. And just to show you guys what we're working with here. If you look, this is where we took our drill bit and we drilled right through here. So we took our drill bit and we drilled through right to where we bumped into the part of the frame right here. This part of the frame curves in. So that's where it stops. You do not want to go past that because below that is where the exterior of the frame begins. So if you drill past this into this bottom part, you're going to come out on the outside of the glass. So you want to make sure you go from here to here, and it's only about a quarter of an inch. But this part right here, as you can see, that's where it bottoms out on that ridge of the uh, aluminum frame. Okay, so if I pull this out, that distance right there, that's, the, that's all of the distance that I want. So once I've drilled that, and my drill is taken out, the next step I'm going to do is take my tap. We're going to put it in the hole. And I'm just going to start hand twisting this. Just turning it, turning it by hand. And I'm turning it until it just stops, until I can't turn it by hand anymore. 
and you'll feel that. Once you get there, put your bar up here in the top and then continue. You go right through that last piece of the metal. It'll start to come out on the bottom side. It'll start to free up a little bit. And then right before it bottoms out, you'll feel it. It'll stop right there. So it stops and you want to stop. Take the bar out and then just with your hand, gently untwist, unscrew the tap. Take your vacuum. Clean up the hole. And then you want to take your socket head cap screw and just put it in there. You can use put it with the washer or not. Um, I just had the washer on there. And then just fill it out to make sure it's what you want. And there might be a little bit of aluminum filings left over from the tap. But once you come through this, you're only going to go through it about uh, you know the length of a, the screw. That's why I got 12 millimeters. You're only going to go through it um, actually probably about eight or eight millimeters through that frame. Just enough to poke out the other side of this V channel. Once you've done that, you're able to get your tap and then proceed to the next step. So we have our drill here. We're going to go ahead and find our hole. We're going to make sure everything's nice and even. Make sure the drill is extremely straight up and down. Don't wobble it side to side or you'll mess up your area for your threads. We'll go through here, get in the channel, start drilling. I have to change drills. I can't get a good grip on this drill. Drill upgrade. I like the other drill because this one is actually too powerful, but it's the one we're going to use. Um, okay, so put the drill in there. As soon as it falls through that first time, you know you're done. Reverse the drill, and then come back out. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to vacuum out the aluminum shavings. And then we're going to move on to our next hole over here.
Okay, now that we get our two holes in position, we know where they're, where they're at, we can go ahead and release our clamps. And we're gonna just take our frame, we'll temp temp temporarily move it over here. And then we'll come back through the vacuum. Keep it clean because you don't want to get those aluminum filings to scratch your glass. Um, and try not to move your glass until the whole entire thing's done, then lift it up. All right, so we've we've gone ahead and drilled our hole. And again, I will show some additional footage of how far I drilled that through. The next step is to get our tap. And you can take this out because it's nice to get go in and just do it by hand to get it started. And you might you need to you'll want to practice on something else. So don't don't practice on this window. Practice on a piece of metal or something like that. Figure out how this works because once you start cutting the threads, you're committed. Uh, but I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna put it right in this V groove where the hole was drilled, and then I'm just gonna start spinning it. And it's gonna begin to cut into my hole and eventually once it gets going you'll get to a point where
piece. And then you got a nice tight seam right here. Uh, and as long as it's not overlapping on this ridge on the left and the right, then you're okay. Uh, so this next part of the video is going to be just time lapse of me completing the taps, drilling all the holes, and then I'll finalize this with showing you a little clip of what it looks like in the van.